larger font, Tim. You got it at nine. Why is it at nine? Who has everything at nine font? But we're going to scroll more. Are you are you are you down to having the scrolling responsibilities? I don't, but I'll do. You no, know, you you is that you, a cat? No, it's my son. No. <laughs> Sorry, with the headphones on, I can't hear. This is the Always More podcast. Hello and hello. It is June 9th and welcome to the Always More podcast where we believe there is always more room at the table for honest questions, meaningful conversations, and deeper understanding. Today on the pod, we are talking about our reviews and recommendations of the week, underground mole people, Sigourney Weaver, UAPs, and so much more. But first, I'd like to welcome my best friend in the whole entire world, Christopher Thomas Ford. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing all right today. Yes. It's been a long day for me, though. Been long. You went to Dallas? So you had an adventure. No, no, no. We went to Terrell, which is near Dallas. Near Dallas, it's but up not in Dallas. that direction. Yeah. But definitely not Dallas. Like this is a town where I could not go if I did not bring my white family. <laughs> um, oh. Like seriously, it, they, there were a lot of signs that were misspelled with uh, K's instead of C's, and that made me very nervous. That's a whole history thing. Like a lot of yeah. people don't oh, realize. Oh, no, I'm aware. <laughs> I am very aware. <laughs> I I make sure I know where I'm going. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, to be fair, it wasn't actually the. I don't think it was a town of Terrell that I saw that in, but it was a town like right next to it on the way. Uh, that makes was, sense. It was scary. Yeah. So. But you're alive. You're. I'm alive. I'm, I made it. You made I it. I made it back. We have peaches. Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, well, hey, guys. Welcome to the podcast. If you're watching us, hello. Welcome. If you're just listening, hey, that's fine, too. You do you, boo. Uh we, 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 we enjoy all mediums, right? Uh, no, not extra mediums. Oh. We <laughs> or smediums. Or smediums. <laughs> Don't enjoy a smedium. Oh, man. Wait, we got a fun podcast for you guys today. It's probably going to be probably one of our shorter ones, I think. I yeah. could be wrong, but I think it's going to be one of our shorter ones. because It this, depends this, on how sucked into this topic I get. That is true. It's, it's, it's hit or miss. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, let's dive on in. We're going to start into our first segment of Rec and Rev Woo. and talk about the things that we uh, recommend or that we view the week that we personally liked. And so I got two quick, quick, blip, blip. Let me try that one more time. Are you I got cut two. That out? No, I'm not. I'm going to just because it's going to take so much it. more time to edit with it. And, you know, You're right. people get to see the real me. You know, I, I stutter sometimes. And that's, that's, that's me. <laughs> Should have gone to speech therapy when you were a kid like I did. I blame my parents. All right, so my I blame mine. <laughs> All right, so my first recommendation of the week is A Quiet Place Part 2. Ooh. Have you seen it? I haven't. I love the first one. Oh man. I'm still sketched out about theaters though, so. I mean, we'll I'm, see. I mean, you're vaccinated though, right? Yeah. Okay. Completely and fully. I, I just still don't trust other people. <laughs> Well, we are too. So that was our like actually little, our little celebratory. Hey, we're vaccinated. Let's go to the movies. And so we went to go see a Quiet Place too. And if you haven't seen the first one, oh man, it's literally probably one of my most favorite unique films. Like it's not my favorite film of all time by any stretch of the means, but it's one of those like it's it's because it's so unique and the way yeah. it is, it truly shines a light on the deaf community. And like I remember like looking at the commentary and looking at John Krasinski and how he actually did it. Like the the girl, his daughter in the movie actually is deaf and right. like they would actually go to her and ask her, hey, how would how would someone that is uh, a, a father of a pr- person who's deaf, you know, how would he learn? How would he react? And, and all these kind of things. So anyways, this movie is a great one. It's part two directly again by John Krasinski with in case you didn't know that's uh Jim from the office love Jim he is amazing problematic but <laughs> funny uh so the movie's really good it's uh it picks right up after the first movie and it's, uh it's not really spoilers but they definitely set up to where there could be a third one so Ooh. uh I know they confirmed that there's probably going to be like a, a, a spin-off but I could see how they could actually go into like a part three see I like movies like that where it's like apocalyptic and then you follow the characters for their story and then there's like a spin-off where it's like the same universe yeah, it's yeah. not necessarily the same characters so you get a whole new experience yeah um Kind of like Walking Dead, I guess they did that. I was thinking about that. I, I didn't really get into Fear of the Walking Dead or the other one that came out. I haven't yet. But, but I, I feel like I could. Well, I just finished, actually, uh, this is actually I was thinking about putting this as my Wreck and Red, but I just finished season 10 of uh, The Walking Dead. So I'm all caught up. Yeah. And so I'm actually thinking about going to Fear of the Walking Dead, but I haven't seen that many good reviews about it. Yeah, so. that, that's been my hesitation. Yeah. I don't but know I if like I'm going to get I like the idea invested. of it. Right. That's all. Right. What's your other one, man? All right, so... Um, 
I'm sure if you guys know me, uh, I'm a huge soccer fan. I mean, you are too, but I, I'm really like, I actually follow the sport. Yeah, I don't follow the sport. I just yeah. love going to the games and I love playing soccer. Um, and so I follow the U.S. national team and there's a player who's really been kind of, he's been labeled Captain America, the the star American player. And he his name is Christian Pulisic. And so long story short, last Saturday, he became the first uh, American player to win the Champions League in Europe. Big deal. He was the first one to actually play and win the Champions League for Chelsea. Super cool, super awesome. And then this past Sunday, you're hearing this probably on a Wednesday or later, but the, on the Sunday, he, uh, him and the U.S. national team won the uh, CONCACAF Nations League, beating Mexico in a really heated rivalry. And I'm just really excited because like this is like, for anyone who's a soccer fan out there, and Aaron, I know you're listening to this, uh, for all you soccer fans, this is like a really super exciting time because you have this new... Um, like generation of young soccer players, like all the like the, the up and comers, right? Like the the average age for the American team this last Sunday was I think twenty two or twenty three, really young. Yeah, and so uh, but it was really exciting. They barely won, but they won nonetheless. And uh, I'm just really excited for Christian Pulisic and the whole uh, American team going forward from here. So you're reckoning Rev was for a person? You know it. I'm yeah. here for it, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm so if you guys it. are interested in soccer and you want to like follow, because also World Cup is coming up and uh, the qualifiers are getting ready to like start right. happening. Right. And so this is a good time to kind of like maybe just kind of dip your toes in a little bit and kind of like, all right, what's going on kinda here? Figure so, out who you want to vote for. Right. Right. Because so, they're not all going to play on the teams for the countries that they currently live in. Well, in the World Cup, yes. Yeah. When it comes to the World Cup, you're allowed to play on whatever team no, for no, the no, country no. you were born in, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, um, what was his name? Uh, Ronaldinho. Like, he, he didn't play for his team all the time. No, 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 no. You know, you can play for a club and then you play for country. Yeah. Right. So, uh, cool. yeah, so that's my two. What you got? All right, so my reckon revs for the week. Um, first off, Bo Burnham put out a new special. I don't know if you've seen that. No. Inside on Netflix. Oh, it's, yes, I did. I haven't watched it It's been all over yet. TikTok. It's been all over all my social media. Didn't you send me one of his videos? I did. So I, <laughs> I got into Bo Burnham when his first specials came out. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, this dude is hilarious. I bought his CD. Like, I bought a physical CD for this guy. I still have it. I think it's in my car. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, this guy's hilarious. And then his other specials came out. I'm like, man, he's got a really cool commentary, and he's hilarious. Yeah. This one, not hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. It was it – was It's a little more, more depressing. <laughs> I wouldn't say depressing. It's – realistic for the artistic mind during this pandemic okay so it's more like a performative art piece than stand-up comedy it's still yeah comedy it still has its funny funny moments and its jokes and all that right but the whole thing put together like you get to see inside the creation of this thing as part of mm. the thing so you get to watch him editing you get to watch Ooh. him like uh put planning his light shows oh, that's and, unique. Uh, writing out his jokes and deleting stuff and kind of what he's going through as he's making this special. Yeah. And it took him over a year to create this full special for Netflix. And he was, he got to the point with, I think many artists where he's like, I never want to release it because that means I have to be done with it. Oh, wow. So if I just keep working on it, then I never have to be done <laughs> and I never have to actually complete it. Yeah. And nobody's ever going to judge it and I'll be fine. Wow. But, Obviously, he released it, yeah, yeah. and it, it's a really deep dive into the mind of an artist, and I, I really like it. It was cool cool cinematography, cool writing, great, hilarious jokes, all of that stuff. Yeah, and uh, if I remember correctly, definitely not kid-appropriate, right? Uh, no, okay. but <laughs> pretty much nothing he does is, <laughs> right. I mean, it's always like almost kid-appropriate, and then like one or two sentences <laughs> in there, you're just like, nope, <laughs> cover your eyes, little Jim. So, no. <laughs> Um, um, my next one, which is kid appropriate, yes, the new Cruella movie. Oh, man, I'm so excited to see this. So Emma Stone oh. was a phenomenal origin villain. Okay, I have a hot take before you continue. Okay, you may not like me for this, but correct me if I'm or just just hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. No, I'll correct you if you're wrong. I think she could be the next Meryl Streep. Could be, not yet. Could be. She has got the. She's got the talent. She's got the. She's got the. Um, just, just the vibe. Like any movie that you, you watch her in. Like I remember even in La La Land. Just she captures the screen every single time she's on. And Easy A, same thing. The woman is just incredibly you know talented. You know what? What? I'll allow it. Yes. She. She. Yeah. She's she just. I don't know what it I is. I put her up there. She, she. She has not reached the same star level as Meryl Streep yet. But give her another 10, 15 years. I bet you could. Look, I've always said Meryl Streep could play Batman and be the right character. Yeah. 
I think Emma Stone could play Batgirl. See, yeah, I'm so I'm that. I'm fine with it. Yeah, okay, for sure. Sorry, 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 for, sorry for that hot take. No, that that's all right. So, anyways, like you were saying, <laughs> captures the audience. Right, like she's <laughs> phenomenal. Um, I don't know how much you know about the movie. I'll try not to do it with any spoilers. Please don't. Um, but Emma Stone it plays a young Cruella Deville from 101 Dalmatians. Yes. Um, you kind of get to see the origin story, like why she became the way she did, what happened, how she got into the fashion world, mm-hmm. and how she got into like designing coats and things like that. And it's a lot cooler than it sounds. <laughs> I know there's like a lot of guys who are like, I don't care about fashion. <laughs> and tru- truthfully, I don't either. I'm wearing an ice cream shirt. <laughs> I don't really care about fashion. But... It was a really cool movie. You got to see the history of Cruella, how yes. she met the two thieves that she works with in the actual oh, 101 Dalmatians, fun. all the cool stuff, how she met Anita and, um, oh, what is the other human's name? I Roger. Oh, yeah. How she met Roger and Anita. So that was a really cool situation. So I like the movie. You should definitely watch it. It's uh, like literally right before we started recording, my wife actually just came back from the theater and she's like, oh, wow, that movie was amazing. I got oh. actually, I was like, yeah, I just watched it on Disney Plus, yeah. uh, Premiere Access. I did not pay for Premiere Access. Uh, my wife's parents had Premiere Access, so we watched we watched it at their at uh, their account. Well, dang, so I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah, just let us know. We'll take you guys. Over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, that was Rec and Rev. Next up, I don't know who needed to hear this, but you're not going to convert anyone at a pride parade ever. Especially with hate. Come on. Like, I've, Come seen, on. I've seen a lot of Christians. Because it's Pride Month now. Yep. Uh, we're in June. Pride yep. Month. I've seen a lot of Christians throughout my life that are like, oh, we're going to go evangelize at Pride Parades. We're going to go show them the love of Christ and convince them not to be gay. Bro, Pride is the wrong place to do that. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> that's not between you and them. That's between them and their partners 100%. and God. Yep. Uh, secondly, they don't want to talk about religion to you Not if there. you're trying to tell them <laughs> that they're wrong. Right. Three, they don't want to talk to you at all. <laughs> if you're not at a pride parade to support the people there, don't go. Yeah, yeah. If you're not at a pride parade for yourself or people that you love or just to show strangers that you love them, yeah, don't go. <laughs> There's no reason to evangelize at a pride parade. It's one ever. Of, it's one of those things to where it's like y- you really just have to ask yourself: Will what I'm doing right now actually help or hurt my cause? And even if you are a Christian who is like the whole non-affirming Christian, and, and, and you have to look at it like: Is what I'm, what I'm about to do right now actually going to help my cause? And I can tell you one hundred thousand percent, it won't. But this thing will not get you any closer to converting someone towards your beliefs. The you, problem with that that thought process is that they go out there and they're like, oh, I'll just, I'll be nicer than Westboro. Oh. But it's the same message. Well, It's, it's like, the same message. What yeah. you're doing is wrong, and you're going to hell because of it. Yeah. Whether you say it that way or not is irrelevant, because they heard Westboro say it that yeah. way. So when you say, hey, what you're doing is wrong, all they hear is, oh, so you're condemning me too. Yeah. Yep. They, don't, they don't want to talk to you. Yep. Trust me, they do not want to talk. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Like, if I'm at a Pride Parade, I'll go tell you to shut up. <laughs> Don't let me catch you at a Pride Parade. Don't let me catch you at a Pride Parade trying to convert somebody. <laughs> That's good, man. Ugh. That's good. All right. I don't know who needed to hear this, but if you like one song by an artist, but don't dig the rest of their stuff, this happens to me all the time, find out who the producer is and seek what other work they've done. The producer can play a big role in how the final song turns out. Extremely accurate. Ed Sheeran is the best example I can think of this, is the dude has, like, he's produced amazing songs, and you, like, because every once in a while you'll find something that's, like, super, like, it's a bop, and it's like, wow, this is really good, but then you listen to the rest of the album, and I'm like, wow, this sucks, but then you, like, oh, you find out, oh, it's because Ed Sheeran was behind it. Yeah, that makes sense. Are you not a fan? I'm I'm not a huge Ed Sheeran fan. (laughs) I don't not like him. Yeah. I just don't particularly care. No, that's fine. That's it. I'm I'm white, so I guess it makes sense. I I understand (laughs) what you're saying. Right. It's like I've I've listened to a lot of music where I'm like, oh, well, this song slaps and like the rest of their stuff. I'm just like, oh, that's yeah, I guess it's cool. Yeah. If you're into that. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've never thought about that. I'm going to start doing that. Looking into the producer. Yep. That's a good idea. And if you even think about it, it and I'm not saying all artists are this way because there are some artists out there like Beyonce who actually write their own lyrics and actually do have a huge part in how their music sounds. But a lot of mo- not 
not most, but I'll say a lot of artists that you probably recognize today, most of their music a is... A lot of pop. A lot of pop, yeah, especially pop. Whether, is, whether it's pop rock or pop hip-hop or pop whatever, K-pop. Yeah, yeah. Pop, whatever it is. And so wh- whatever song that you find a little bit more catchy than the rest, try to find out who the producer was for that particular song, and you could probably find some other songs that you might like, just like it. So yeah, That's a good way to find new artists, too, because I'm sure they're always looking at like newer artists. That's true. Sure. Cool. All right, well, it is time for our next segment. It is... What did I miss? Oh, yeah. I love that one. What you got for me, Tim? What you got for me? Tell me. All right, what did I miss? All right, so here is... Okay, I want you to picture this. Picture this. I'm picturing You're an Italian farmer. Done. (laughs) I'm there in my head. You're you're, you're out in in, in the middle of the night. You hear a big boom. Stroking my mustache. (laughs) Boom. What was that? Right. Okay. Okay. You think it's nothing? Maybe it's a, maybe it's a thunder strike or something like that. Next morning, you go out and you go check on your uh, your chicken coop. Mm-hmm. Because that's what you do. You're an Italian farmer. You go check on your chickens. Got to make sure my chickens are fine. I heard a big boom. Heard a big boom. And then you go to your chicken coop, and it's all blown up. Are my chickens okay? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Where are my chickens? Okay. What happened to my chickens, Tim? <laughs> okay, so here's what here's what happened. So an Italian army tank was taking part in a military exercise. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, you're gonna love this. Okay, okay. So there's like this military base nearby. This ar- this uh, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Okay, I just have to read it because I can't get through it on my own. An Italian army tank taking part in a military exercise in northern Italy mistakenly blew up a chicken coop, killing a large number of birds, local police said. Uh, So, okay, so here's what happened. (laughs) The guy, there's like like this artillery base nearby and like, you know, you you have a, uh, you have a range and so they're practicing, doing their thing. And one of them just- Like out here at Fort Hood. Yeah, right. We're used to it because we live in a base and so like, oh yeah, you know, I hear booms all the time. Well, this guy, um, I guess the, whoever, it was a tank, and I guess they just missed whatever they were trying to hit, and it went really far and hit a random chicken coop. First off, I'd like to just think about the odds of this. Like, it was the chicken coop, <laughs> not the house. The house is a much bigger target. Well, it must have, like, the chicken coop must be a little bit farther away for him to recognize the boom, but not be, like, scared by it. So, it may be, like, down the road, but around his house. Still on his property. property. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I I, I just want to think about the odds. This guy just randomly misses, and it just hits this random chicken coop. Who pays for that? (laughs) So, like. I'm assuming the Italian government would. You would. Like, he would just be like, hey, you guys blew up my stuff. And they're like, can you prove it? And he's just like, huh? What do you mean, prove it? (laughs) Where are all my chickens? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I couldn't. Okay, so I tried to like research more and find out more about everything, but everything was in Italian, so I was really struggling. I'm pretty sure they're covering it up. <laughs> That's kind of how it sounded, to be honest. Uh, so it, basically, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, uh, the uh, army didn't make any comments with the first batch of uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it with news articles and stuff. But uh, yeah, so but we do know it was them. They just trying to cover it up, I guess. So, yeah, that sounds about right. Long story short, um, if your chickens go missing <laughs> due to an explosion, check your government. Check, check your local army. <laughs> go army strong. <laughs> All right, what you got, brother? All right, mine is not as funny. I kind of <laughs> wish I had found another one now. Uh, it, it's still pretty good, though. So this kid, uh, this, this teenager, I should say, yeah. spent six years digging an underground home in the garden of his parents' house. After they had a fight one year. <laughs> so this, yeah, no, follow me here. So I think his name is Andres Canto or Canto. Yeah. Was 14 years old yeah. when he asked his parents if he could go into town. And they told him he couldn't unless he was wearing a particular track suit. So that I guess they could identify him if they were driving around town. I don't know. Quite odd. I, I don't understand it. They got into a minor disagreement, right? Yeah. So he did what any kid does when they're angry. He went and grabbed a pickaxe and just started digging outside. Yeah, naturally. And he realized, this is pretty fun. I like doing this. <laughs> so, like, Not a new hobby. <laughs> his hobby was literally just like pickaxing the yard. <laughs> Eventually, he started digging in pretty deep. And he was like, you know what? I like holes. I'm going to hang out here in this hole. <laughs> this is a nice hole. I like this hole. Oh, man. So for the next six years, uh, he just he kept digging. Wait, like, wait, 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 wait. Pause, 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 pause. He was digging for six years. How did his parents not notice this big, huge hole in the backyard? No, they eventually noticed. Yeah. 
after six years? I'm sure it took a lot long or a lot less time than six years, but so they just let him go after that. Like, yeah, yeah you're, you're, I, <laughs> I mean, apparently, yeah. So the kid was 14 when he started. He was 20 when the article was written. Uh, he's an actor in Spain. He lives in a town called La Romana. Oh, uh, okay. So Spain, you know, yeah, Spain. It's yeah. not American. Uh, Spanish. No, I, I don't know if Spanish have a digging stereotype or not. <laughs> Whatever. They, they do we'll now. figure it out. They do now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, he started digging. Um, eventually, one of his friends got access to a pneumatic drill so he started using that um yeah no they've they've been digging around i think uh he said he spent about 14 hours a week digging this underground home which is now essentially like a full-on apartment oh he's got God. a living room and a bedroom stairs down to it um like over time he started using more and more intricate art architectural uh, systems to build so he's got like support beams and yeah. he's using a pulley system to move dirt out wait he didn't put a bathroom in there did he i god i hope not that's weird <laughs> i i don't think you can like but i mean technically I mean, you'd have to right like i mean if you're living down there i don't know maybe he just goes inside his parents house for the bathroom okay kind of like a guest house and maybe i don't know man it, whatever <laughs> weirdness he's got going on i'm not gonna judge but he has plans to expand. He's going to keep going. Yeah. That's what the article wow. said. He's got plans to expand. So six years, uh, one living room, one bedroom, maybe one bath apartment. <laughs> That's persistence. Man, Dude. I tell you what, if there's one thing to learn from this story, it's like you can you can do whatever you want to do. Just if put you have six years in a pneumatic drill. Yes, right. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so that's what I've got. Um, oh, last thing about it. Yeah. He's estimated he's only spent about fifty euros total. No, for you, this are, okay for this one bedroom apartment. Okay, maybe I could believe that only because have you seen those TikTok videos of those guys? Is it like India or I can't remember what Asian country? I think it's Asia. And those guys just like oh, build the pools. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought of when I was reading this. I was like, oh yeah, they need to hook up and get this guy in a pool, yeah. and then he can build them an apartment. <laughs> These guys can be buddies. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that so was... that's that's what i've got for that one that was my <laughs> news you didn't hear about all right guys well hey that was our what did i miss and next up we're going to go into a fun segment about aliens you ready i'm down all right let's, let's do it let's do it welcome back yes. to the pod the pod our pod your pod all the always pod. more pod. All, it's all. It's for. <laughs> it's a pod for men and women. For all. For all. Not a guy girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I love that reference. <laughs> all right, guys. So today on our pod, our main topic for the day, we are talking about aliens. Yes. And in case you're wondering, yes, that is the same sound effect we used for conspiracy theories because we don't have a lot of money. <laughs> Sound effects are expensive. Uh, we're no. working on it, guys. We're working. <laughs> so today we're talking about aliens. <laughs> the reason why we chose this topic is because we wanted to have a little fun. Yes. So yeah. also, we just happen to have video evidence of actual UFOs now. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, yeah the government just, just was like, hey, uh, we know you guys are going through a whole lot, you know, pandemic. <laughs> Here's some money for whatever you need to use it for some aliens and then we're also going and the government what, 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 i'm sorry what you guys said what S uh what? some some money for your Rewind. for whatever you need it for yeah that's cool we need more of that but uh the the last thing did you say aliens <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. it's kind of sketch and then like nobody did anything about it that's the most interesting thing about all this we were all just like yeah makes sense <laughs> That's anyway, so back to TikTok. <laughs> like, what? Why didn't nobody do anything? It's like it's like people summed it all up with just 2020. Like, yeah, that makes sense. 2020. Anybody else on their bingo card for 2020? Yeah, aliens. Uh, Drake folks? Bell going to prison and oh. aliens. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's happening too. Uh, yeah. Drake Campania. Oh, uh, no. Now going to jail. <laughs> he deserves it. He's trash. Oh, Anyways, man. so we're talking about aliens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guys, we okay, so this is going to be a fun one. I, I What I did is I collected some uh, articles and stuff, and Chris and I are just going to go back and forth about it because we have our own thoughts about aliens, but I also wanted to just kind of basically start from the beginning where this whole thing even started from. In the beginning, God created—I'm just kidding. 
we're actually going to have to talk about that. <laughs> we are, yeah. <laughs> okay, so basically, it kind of all starts here. So when former President Trump signed the three, uh, excuse me, two point three trillion COVID relief bill, he not only signed off on sending sending us some money, but he also included an order to the Pentagon to uh, declassify top secret information collected by their Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program Task Force. Say that three times fast. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program Task Force. Very nice. The ATIPATIF. <laughs> the ATIP. Very good. I'm, yeah, very good. <laughs> okay, so the U.S. Navy, among other government agencies, but especially the Navy, uh, have since then uh, confirmed and have recorded UFO sightings. So there's actually a bunch of them. But so like in 2015, Navy pilots were doing some maneuvers and their uh, uh, Super Hornets, and they actually spotted what they said was a fleet of UFOs. A fleet. Here's the quote. Look at this thing, dude. One pilot shouted, oh my gosh, there's a whole fleet of them. They're going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots west. That's 135 miles per hour for those of you who are not familiar with how to convert knots to miles per hour. West. Okay, and, okay, guys, just think about this. And I'm gonna, I'm, I promise you, I'm gonna put all this in my show notes. So please go check this out if you, or just Google it. Honestly, they have video evidence of this stuff. Yeah. Okay, so here, here's here's more. This according to Time Magazine, where I get most of the info from. Cockpit cameras. I can't read this. Captured what was uh, captured what the crew was seeing, and in 2020, the Pentagon declassified the uh, footage. Uh, perhaps the most remarkable thing about what the crew saw that day was how unremarkable it was becoming. In other words, they knew about it, and they've been seeing it over and over again. And so, in the past 20 years, military pilots have made more than 120 sightings of objects with no apparent signs of conventional propulsion. In other words, no exhaust, no contrails, no uh, no wings, no fins, nothing like that. It looks like a like it's like a stereotypical UFO, like you know, uh, what do you call it? Not a sphere, cylinder, uh, no flying saucer, saucer. That's the word. Yeah, I don't like this. I'm cool with it, truthfully. Okay, no, no, look, look, I, I don't care about aliens. I don't care if aliens exist. I don't like the fact that they're just creeping on us. I'm cool with it, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Truman Show. They're just watching a, a show called Earth. They're in, like, what, season 2021 right now? Yeah. And they're just like, oh, yeah, this show is great. <laughs> Can't okay. wait for the finale. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so one pilot said this. Uh, These things would be out there all day. At just the chilling. Just chilling. Just watching us. <laughs> Oh, you guys are cute. Look at you try to fly. <laughs> Look at you guys having to go in one direction to go this speed. That's adorable. So at, at the speed of which the objects were moving, he added 12 hours in the air is 11 hours longer than we'd expect. Other objects uh, sighted have done... Uh, at, let me say that one more time. After it's, Other objects sighted have done other extraordinary things, including diving from the air into the ocean and back out. Once again, at seemingly fatal speeds. So, okay, here, here's, 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing. If it's not aliens, someone out there has really advanced technology. It's the Wakandans. I mean, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's probably... I mean, why not, right? <laughs> Wakanda forever. It, it's, just, it's just remarkable to think about this. Because it's like, okay, look, even if you don't believe in it's aliens, you, you got you to gotta really tr- drop some conclusions. Because this stuff, they have on video of these un, 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 unidentified objects going up and down into the ocean at really fatal speeds. Like, if you were to do it, you would die because it's a crash. My favorite thing is, like, imagining the training pilots for the first time seeing this stuff. They're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Have you guys seen anything like this before? And they're like, yeah. Johnson saw one last week. Wait till you see this one. It's really good at diving. I give this one an eight out of eight out of ten for because normally it's a lot more flashy, you know. I wonder. Sometimes they, he likes to go up, go down, bring up a whale with him every now and then. The whale is confused. I wonder if they like have like secret names for them all. Like, oh yeah, that's Bob, and there's Susan over there. <laughs> Susan does some really great flips. Wait to see, wait to see what she does. Susan, do the flippy thing. <laughs> Yeah, she did it. (laughs) Okay, okay. So everyone has been asking basically the U.S. Navy, the government, is it true? Are aliens real? And pretty much what the government has best told us is... The same thing that they always tell us, really. They can neither confirm nor deny. That's basically what it comes down to. We may or may not have had aliens visit us. We may or may not 
be able to confirm the existence right. of aliens. There may or may not be a space council of aliens without us contemplating letting us in. Right. Now, here's the thing, because I'm when point number three here is I'm talking about President Obama, um, and he he had a, he had an interview with the late night late late show late late night show the late night show the late late, late, late show. show the late not the late show the late late show. not the late late <laughs> late show just and the, not the really late show <laughs> just the late late show. Okay, okay. So this is what uh, former President Obama said in an interview on the late late show. He said this: uh, "What is true, and I'm actually being serious here, is that there are there's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. We can't explain how they moved, their trajectory. Uh, they did not have an easily explainable pattern. And so you know, I think that people are still take serious." Let me try that again. I think that people still take seriously trying to investigate and figure out what this is. So now here's where he could be fibbing a little bit. He could probably know a lot more than what he's letting on to us, like figure out. I, look, if, if we've, we've we've recorded up to 120 of these things, we got to know a little bit more. You, you can't tell me that the government hasn't like. Look, if they no, we don't. If they've kept it, if, no. Look, listen. If they've kept if they kept it this hidden for this long, there's got to be some other things that they're keeping hidden. Keeping hidden for sure. But that does not necessarily mean that they know more than what they've released. Right. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, I'm This is an otherworldly phenomenon. They've actually changed it from UFO to UAP. <laughs> it's unidentified aerial phenomena. Yeah. Because they don't know if they're actually you know, ships or aliens right, or what. Right. It could just be like gas lights that they don't understand yet. Yeah. But I feel like the government is like, yeah, we know this. <laughs> We're keeping all of this stuff back back, so... So you guys don't panic. Right. And right. then the people that are in the government are like, what is going on? I don't understand any of this. What is happening? Yeah. Yeah. Either that or flip side of that coin, they know everything. And mm -hmm. that's why technology has had such a huge boom lately. That can be. Yeah. Didn't, wasn't that one of your uh, theories a few yep. weeks back? Mm, probably. Mm. I don't remember. Okay. Once, once I put my theories out there, I just let the crazy <laughs> take over. <laughs> Okay, so here's what's happened, I think, because of all this. Once this news broke out last year, one of two two things have usually happened. One is we just gave more fuel to the fire to the conspiracy theorist, like right. both the good and the bad ones, like like the whole, like, you know, Obama was an alien or whatever, like all crazy no, stuff. No, lizard people. Lizard people. Democrats oh, are lizard people. That's right. Um, they live under the earth, not off earth. That's right. Have you seen Doctor Who? Yes. So you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, those, yeah. That's the, those are the lizard people that they're talking about. I love about. that. I love that. Okay, anyway, sorry. Um, I, okay, so here's, here's a question, Chris. Here's a question for you, and I, I want a serious answer from you. Men in black. Oh. I, I don't know what question you were going to ask, but my answer is men in black. I didn't even think about that. Maybe that's why the whole Space Force thing became into existence. I mean, Trump being Trump, but still, if you knew all these things. Huh. Like maybe, like maybe it was like a way to justify all the money going somewhere. Yeah. Ooh. Do you know anyone that's actually in the Space Force? No. Because I don't. That's interesting. I know Marines. I know Air Force. <laughs> I know Navy. I definitely know Army. And I don't know one person in the Space Force. But it's a thing, apparently. Man. It could become a thing now. Or it already is. Okay. 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 We need Space Rangers. Where's okay. Buzz Lightyear? So here's my question to you, though. My original question. Yeah. The people in the 70s and the 80s. 60s, all those in that era, that they were telling everyone, you know, their their dogs got abducted or they got abducted and they were, you know, probed and all that weird stuff. Any any probability to that now? I believe maybe like one or two of them. Really? I don't feel like most of them that said that were. But if the aliens started coming, like if you believe the ancient aliens theory, right? Yep. They showed up thousands of years ago, helped us set up civilization, and then dipped. And then they came back recently, like in the 70s and 80s, and they're like, yeah, let's see how mankind is progressing. Let's take a couple of them, do some DNA testing, you know, kind of spice things up a little <laughs> bit, see what we can do. Yeah. And then leave them alone for another <laughs> couple of millennia. And we'll come back and check on them every now and then, <laughs> like a science project. Little pets. Yeah. <laughs> like when you're a kid, you get like a little caterpillar and you put it in a little container, it crawls up some leaves that you leave in there and yeah. it cocoons and you check on it every now and then. <laughs> Maybe for us, like checking on it once every couple of days to the caterpillars, like once every few years. Right, yeah. So maybe that's the same thing they're doing to us. Mm. Maybe they did take a few of them. 
And then a few other crazies from the 70s and 80s were like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a cool story. Me too. <laughs> me too. And the one guy's like, no, it really happened. He's like, yeah, it really happened to me too. No, it really <laughs> happened to me. Yeah. It, yeah, it happened to all of us, Bob. <laughs> Every single one of us, buddy. Every one of us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay, here's, here's the bottom line question, Chris, and we both answer this one. Do you think aliens exist? I am 99.99999999% percent <laughs> sure that they do exist. Yeah. I, I, I'm probably on the same same agreement with you on that. Yeah. O- only because, and we can talk about this later, or I don't want to get into it because I read some articles from, uh, uh, what's his name, Tyson. But just the, uh, the mathematical odds that we would be alone in the universe are so extremely low. It, it's just... It's What's weird, they're only low because we exist. Like, the mathematical odds that life would start oh, at all... Yeah. good point. ...were extremely low. Right, right. But since we exist, the mathematical odds that we're the only ones are also very low. How cool is that? Yeah. Math is weird. Math is weird. Interesting. I don't like that. So, yeah, I think, I think they do. I think, you know, and we can talk about this because we actually have another uh, little point to get to on this, but I think... I, the universe is freaking huge. I mean, it's so huge that we have not seen the edge of it because it's still expanding and still going so fast that we can't see the where it's gone to yet because light travels not slowly, but because of how big it is, it seems so slow. Yeah. Uh, so here's a fun fact before we continue on. So back in the 80s when uh, President Reagan was in office and Gorbachev, is that how you say his name? Gorbachev. Gorbachev. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. Right. So during the 1985 Geneva Summit, uh, these guys were doing their thing, talking about Cold War stuff and stuff. And uh, basically, Reagan decided to take uh, Gorbachev and go, hey, let's let's you and I just chat privately. So it was only between them two and a translator. That's all it was, just those three guys. And they go out, and they just go out and start taking a stroll and start talking. And Reagan goes very blunt to him. He goes, okay, real talk. I'm summarizing, but real talk. I would assume so, because Reagan would not say real talk. If aliens come down, you got her back? And Gorbachev's like, yeah. And Reagan's like, cool, us too. We got your back. And then that was it. That was it. Reagan knew something. <laughs> Reagan knew something. For him to go that crazy with, with Russia and go, hey, look, if aliens attack, we set aside our differences. You know, we let go of all this petty stuff. That's a that's a That's a... Come on, man. He knows something. That's like one of those situations where, like, you and your sibling always fight. But <laughs> if that kid down the road throws a rock at your house, you're both going over there to right, beat him up. Right, right. That's I've been in that situation. Like, but this is like Cold look, War. Like these he guys. He attacks. You got my back. <laughs> but, I got your back. But this is like this is like. I mean, granted, it's like humanity. You want to protect humanity. But think about this. Like Reagan thought this was could be real enough to go. Hey, look. Real talk. If this happens, we got each other's back, right? Like, it was that serious in his head. I'm telling you, man, presidents know a lot more than they tell us. Mm. They have a lot more information than they want to give. Yeah. And it's terrifying. It is. It is. Okay. So one of the questions people have asked regarding alien visitors is why haven't they made an appearance yet? And so we've come up with four reasons, and uh, I, I've quoted Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's how you say Neil it. deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse. Why is it not grassy? I want to say grassy because Because of, you watched that show, deGrasse. I told you not to get into I know. that. No. Okay. 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 Neil deGrasse Tyson. Sorry. Thanks a lot, Drake. Thanks. Um, and so he summed it up into a few reasons, and Chris added his own too. So number one, uh, space travel is too hard. I mean, okay, so just... Too hard for us, maybe. Well, and that's the point, is like maybe they haven't visited us because it truly is that hard. I mean, think about it. Like the closest possible um, uh, habitable planet is like, what is it, like a few hundred uh, thousand light years away? Yeah, but we don't know what their biology is. We don't know what planets they inhabit. We don't know if they're like constantly traveling through space. We don't know if they have wormholes. Well, and that's another thing too. Is like that's just we don't know the technology at their disposal if they do exist. Even if it's technology. What if it's just biology? Like they're biologically able to create wormholes wherever. Are you talking about like kind of like the whales in Star Wars Rebels that can just go yeah, to oh like, man. That'd be cool, right? That would be cool. Okay, but they're just like Moo. <laughs> And Could then, you imagine those being the first planet? aliens that we experience? <laughs> these flying whales in the sky. Uh, <laughs> you guys seeing this? 
<laughs> okay, for you guys that don't know this, because this is a deep dive into Star Wars Rebels, there are these creatures in the Star Wars universe, and they're essentially space whales. And they can not only fly in space and live in the empty void of space, but they can like go up into warp sp- not warp speed, what's the word I'm looking for? Hyper hyper hyperspace. Hyperspace, yeah. And they can like just travel incredibly fast. And so <laughs> could you imagine that? <laughs> that was like the one <laughs> Dude, I'm here for it. I'm all about it. Yes, I can imagine that. I love it. I'm here for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chris, you want to go number two? Yeah, Why? So, <laughs> number two, the second reason that we wrote down is that they got here, took a look at us, and they just were not interested. <laughs> this is probably the most plausible thing. Like, they they had already been somewhere, and they're like, oh, yeah, we've seen humans before. Or, like, they got here thousands of years ago, like I was saying, and they're like, yeah, this is enough. We're fine. We see where you guys are going with this. Not interested. We're going to pass. They swiped left immediately. <laughs> they were like, Oop, Earth, whoop. Either that or or it's like one of those things where they're, like, flying through the Milky Way, and they're like, all right, we're in the Milky Way. Everybody lock your doors. Boop, boop. You talking about the planet of people that kill each other with fire? No, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Stay away from those guys. <laughs> Don't talk to them. I can imagine like little uh, like mommy uh, aliens and daughter or like little kid aliens. Like, no, no, don't go over there. That's where <laughs> that's dangerous over there, guys. But mommy, I want to see. No, <laughs> don't do it. I said no. <laughs> I said no, little Glorbach. <laughs> okay, so another one that Neil uh, said, and I, I think this is actually really insightful like something you don't really think about is maybe they don't want to colonize like maybe it's kind of like you know the rest of human civilization where we are like we realize every single time that like when great britain colonized the uh the, the americas it ended up failing them basically every european nation in the long run mo- for the most part a lot of their colonies broke off and caused civil war and created their own nations and so maybe the aliens rather they don't have the technology to you know sustain a, a colony but maybe they just like it's not worth it like eventually even if we did take over humans and we created our own new civilization on this planet those guys would just break off and start their own little civilization yeah, like they have to give us their resources and they're like no we don't want to do that right they're just going to waste them fight over them yeah i don't understand that yeah that's a good one my favorite explanation though that's here reason number four they've seen our movies yeah sounds sounds legit and they are terrified of will smith <laughs> Like every Ant-Man. single movie he's in yeah. with aliens, he punches an alien. Yeah, yeah. Just like straight up punches it in the face. <laughs> and he's just unapologetically punching aliens across the galaxy. Yes. I'm here for it. Okay, so that actually brings us to our next segment, uh, our top three favorite alien movies. Uh, so we, I, I personally decided to cut off like space exploration movies because there's a lot of great ones out there. There's so many. So I just Top wanna, three is hard. It is. This is obviously not including... Any Marvel movies or DC movies because... Or Star Wars. Or Star Wars. Nothing yeah. where, like, the story doesn't involve aliens. Right, right. Like, being aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. so, okay, my my top three, and this is probably in order, uh, Super 8. You ever watch Super 8? I remember Super 8. I think that was the first time you met Janelle is we went out to see <gasps> Super 8. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's such a great memory. Wow, just kind of flooding all Memory back. unlocked. There you wow. go. Wow. Yeah, Super 8, it's about this uh, group of kids in the uh, 80s, I think. Uh, and they have the Super 8 camera, which is, you know, this old camera. Uh, and they just, it's, it's kind of like Goonies or um, like this traditional, like, young kids. Uh, Coming of age tale of right. young child finds alien after it destroys a train. and Yeah. And it's just a feel good movie and actually it's by J.J. Abrams and it's not like the super amazing great movie but to me it was like just hit all in the right feels maybe because it has such a huge emotional connection with you guys but maybe um, but yeah so that's that's my number that's a good one. yeah number three you want to go next or should just, no, just the rest do, of my... do all yours all right number two this one we definitely have a connection with and that is the movie Signs yeah I don't like that movie <laughs> I like it. Okay, so never liked it. Never will. Okay, here's a fun story for all you guys. I hate you. <laughs> I take back my positive memory. <laughs> so back in middle school, when Chris and I really started to become friends, I don't like scary movies, man. <laughs> Him and Dre came over to the house, and we decided to watch Signs. And if you don't know this movie, it's uh, it's about aliens. Obviously, it's got Mel Gibbs, uh, Mel Gibson, uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix, and a few other smaller uh, actors. Um, and it's by um, what's his name? M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, 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 that guy. M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> Shyamalan. M. M. Night Shyamalan. I know how to say his name. <laughs> it's just more fun to say Shyamalan. 
in this movie, like maybe as an adult, it would have been hit differently. But as a kid, when you're watching this thing, it felt so freaking real. Yeah. Like I'm like watching like because they have like some of those like footages of like like they made it look like people yeah. like in the movie like actually capturing it on their phones. Like found and, or footage. Phones. Yeah, yeah, found footage, and it's just super creepy. And so we decided to watch this movie, and Chris and Dre are there, and Chris is like he is. Okay, so let <laughs> let me let me tell you. I don't know if so I should. So I don't like. I don't like being scared, <laughs> but I use humor to cover things up. Yes. So everybody was like, oh, how are you feeling? Because I was obviously scared. I was like, I'm, I'm scared. Eh, I'm scared. And I was scared, but I was joking. I was like, Tim, can your mom come sleep out here with us? <laughs> like, I'm scared. <laughs> Jokingly, but yeah. that's the thing that your mom remembers oh, because yeah. she gets a kick out of it. The thing that really bothered me, though, that really scared me is I was going pee. <laughs> And Dre put his fingers under the door like the science thing did. And when I saw it, I jumped and peed on the back of your toilet. <laughs> and I had to clean that oh up. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know this part of the yeah. story. <laughs> what? You, you thought I didn't get scared when he did that? I don't remember that. Yeah, I peed on the back of your toilet, cleaned it up. Sorry, Mama Sharon. I'm so sorry. Oh. Um, but it, it was a... Uh, not a fun day for me. Oh. So I had nightmares. Okay. Anyways, it's a good movie. It's really great. It has it has asthmatics in it. So that makes me, that's something that I relate to. Inclusivity. Inclusivity. All right. And then the last one is actually a really good movie for any of you guys that are like looking for a good movie to watch. It's called Arrival. Still haven't seen it. So freaking good. It's on my list. It's got, it. it's got Amy Adams and, um, oh, what's his name? Hawkeye. What's Jeremy that? Renner. Yeah. Uh, the movie is what happens. These aliens come in. I'm not going to spoil anything, but basically they, they bring in these different groups of specialists to try to communicate with them. And it's all about how people communicate with one another. And she's a, what do you call it? A, a person linguist. Yeah. And, um, she's trying to learn. I, feel like I know more about this movie than you do. It's funny. <laughs> and she's trying to learn from the aliens and she's learning their language, which is extremely unique. And I'm not going to spoil it because it's just, it's so, it's one of those movies that at the very end is definitely a twist movie, but not like to where you can't understand what's going on. It's just, and, and it's got such a huge emotional, pull to it and so highly highly recommend that movie even if you weren't watching alien movies it's really on my good. list for sure i definitely want to check it out all right what's your top three man all right so my top three went a different direction with this one um number one alien i haven't seen it with sigourney weaver <laughs> i know you haven't seen alien no i have all of them i think i gave you all of them you have access to them on uh oh um, on voodoo i think oh maybe yeah i haven't, I haven't seen them okay well, you need to watch them <laughs> okay. first and foremost because top tier movie. I, I'm, right? I believe it. Like I'm, I'm, I mean, there's aliens, there's androids, there's all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, the technology at the time was like top tier, <laughs> top tier. Was it 80s, 80s right? Technology. Yeah. yeah. But when I worked at Disney World, there was a ride that oh, um, yeah. alien came out of the ceiling, and that was always a really cool thing. They had like a robotic Sigourney Weaver. Oh. Uh, she was probably like one of my first crushes of all time <laughs> and to this day remains so. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And then number two for me, also Sigourney Weaver, Galaxy Quest. I forgot she was in this. Yeah. I forgot about this. Tim Allen, <laughs> uh, Alan Rickman was in it. Snape. Guys, if you have not seen this movie, it is probably the dumbest movie of all time. <laughs> need your help. So this one, <laughs> this one is about aliens that did see our movies and our TV shows, basically their equivalent of Star Trek. Yeah. They came to Earth, and they asked the captain, <laughs> the actor that played the captain, yeah. for help defeating an actual alien. Right. And for like half the movie, he didn't realize he was actually in, in space. space with these aliens. <laughs> he thought he was on a new he show. He thought he was on a new show. <laughs> <laughs> they, they show up, and they're, they're like giving him all the customs, and he's like, oh, yeah, so I guess we're doing a reboot. And they're just like, eh. <laughs> Like really weird aliens, yeah. But it was a great movie. It's a, a comedy. It um. Oh man, guess who the else guy, is in it? Justin Long is in it. Yes, but there's one more big actor in there. I can't actually remember his name, but I can see his face. I'm gonna look it up real quick. Yeah, please do. Because you're, you're gonna flip. Once it's, we... it's got a lot of really big names in it. Yeah. No, it's one of those movies. Like when you're watching it as a kid, it's like a little bit better. But as an adult, you look back and you're like, oh, this movie was. Horrible. Yeah, it's probably very problematic nowadays. Alan Rickman. I said that. Professor oh, Snape. Oh, did you say that? Yeah. Oh, my bad. Come on, Tim. Oh, the game. oh Tony, uh, um, I can't pronounce his name. Shab Shabol? Shaloub. 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 Yeah. He's in a lot of stuff, too. Monk. 
Yeah. Sam he was, Rockwell. He was also in uh, wow. MIB and a few things. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. Um, and then my last one, Cloverfield Paradox. Yes. A lot of people didn't like this movie, but I really appreciated it for the uniqueness of I it. I like the whole series. The whole series is great. Yeah. Cloverfield, say what you want about it. I loved it. Yeah, me too. It's a fun series. It's loosely connected, so you don't have to watch one to right. understand the others. And Cloverfield Paradox was just a fun, kind of almost an origin story mm-hmm. for Cloverfield and uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Yeah. But it's like an alternate universe alien thing instead of a different planet alien thing. And I always like right. that theory. Like the parallel universes. Mm-hmm. I like that as an idea. So definitely check those out. Yeah. Um, the last one is not for kids. No. What I really love about that Very those brutal. movies, too, is not only are they um, like loosely connected, but they're also almost different genres. Yeah. So each one is a different, like the first one is a um, found footage. The second one is like basically a horror, like mm-hmm. a secluded horror film. And then the third one is like this space exploration, like suspense. Yes, yeah, suspense. Yeah. And so it's very different, very unique. And uh, yeah, super cool. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. You got some honorable mentions here. We have to mention these because oh, I, yeah. see, see, I see some winners on here. Honorable mentions for this one. And we won't dig too deep into this. I'm going to start with MIB, Men in Black. Probably one of the best Classic. alien movies of yep. all time. Classic yep. 90s alien movie. Will I, Smith. I need you to look right here. <laughs> and now I don't remember what we were talking about. Um, next, Independence Day. Yeah, another classic. Another. I well, mean, welcome Will to Smith. Earth. Yeah. That's probably why they don't come visit. You just open the cockpit and punch an alien. Yeah. I wouldn't want to show up. Nope. Like if I thought I was going to get punched in the face as a greeting. Like if they just misinterpreted <laughs> that, they're like, oh, that's how they greet people? No, thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't show up. I was just here to say hi. <laughs> and, and then my last one that is also a huge favorite. I never go anywhere without a towel for this reason. Alan Rickman was also in this one. Martin Freeman was in this one. And Zoe Deschanel was in this one. Yeah. These are all phenomenal actors. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's right. I haven't seen this since I was a kid, but it's it's a good one. Oh, you need to watch it as an adult. It makes a lot more sense. Yeah. The depressed robot really hits home. <laughs> really hits home. Yeah. So those are the honorable mentions for that. Um, feel free to shoot us a message, comment, yes. text us, whatever. Facebook us, Instagram us. We have an Instagram, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instagram yeah. us. However you want to get in touch with us with your favorite alien movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I want to hear what it is and why it is. I'm sure we'll post like a story, like a like a question, like what's your favorite alien movie or something. And then we're not going to talk about it because we're recording this before we post the question. No, I mean like we'll, like after the episode airs, we'll go like, hey, okay, we talked about this. What's your favorite alien yeah. movie? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like. I mean, but we're not going to talk about it tonight. Oh, no. As as far as it comes tonight, we do not care about your favorite alien movie. <laughs> but after tonight, I want to hear about it. Tell me. Okay, so I thought it might be just a fun conversation because I wasn't sure how long this conversation was going to go. And sure enough, Chris and I can make something that's worth 10 <laughs> minutes going to 30 minutes, but, you know, whatever. Um, but I, I thought it would be just an interesting concept because I, I'm, I'm used to be a pastor, and Chris did not, but he he's went to Bible school. Qualified he, to be a pastor. He's definitely more qualified than I was. Um, and Isn't that funny? No. <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> um, and so I wanted to talk about, like, what does this actually mean for Christianity? We can just spitball out of this, but because there's some, like, legitimate questions. If aliens exist, there's some sincere questions to ask ourselves if, for you guys who might actually believe in God and believe in Christianity and stuff like that. Stuff like that. So, like, here's a question is, did Jesus go to other planets? I don't think he had to, like, for salvation purposes. I think he might have just to go. Yeah. Why not? I mean, it, I would. If would, you could travel anywhere in the blink of an eye, space and time, for any reason, right. whatsoever, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh man, you should have gone to this party last week on Alpha Centauri A639285. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I think I think about just like because I've seen a lot, especially in the past when when we started really doing space exploration and beyond just trying to beat Russia to the moon. A lot of I remember, especially growing up, a lot of Christians were reluctant to like really proving that aliens would exist because it might show that for whatever reason that maybe we're not as important as far as creation goes. And I think it's just kind of like a funny, silly argument because it's like God created all things. If He created aliens in other universes, even if they are intelligent, we're not. The whole point of Christianity is that we're supposed to humble ourselves. And so right. we're not supposed to be necessarily the most supreme things in the universe. It's all about being meek and about being um, uh, being humble and, and, and not having pride. And so to me, if there's other intelligent life out there, I say, welcome in. Let's let's figure things out. Let's 
advanced technology that's advanced. Um, now, see, for me, I'm saying no. Don't come here. If you're intelligent <laughs> life, save yourself. <laughs> Stay as far away from us as you can. Right. We are cursed. We are doomed. <laughs> Don't come near us. Stay away. Yeah. <laughs> that That's my thing. Uh, all right. Well, hey, guys, I think we're going to end it there because we, we had a good, fun alien argument um, or conversation, and aliens are fun to talk about because, well, they used to be fun to talk about. Now it's a little scary, to be honest. Nah. Look. I'm kind of in that, like, Gen Z mentality. Like, if it happens, it happens. <laughs> Whatever. Like, just, adult life is just so weird, it might as well happen. If 2020 has shown us anything, it's that truly anything can happen. Drake and, Bell's in prison. I, I mean, mentioned that earlier, and I'm going to mention it again. <laughs> They're doing an iCarly reboot, and Drake Bell's in prison. Or going to prison. I just, I think in, in, in reality, like just like real Tim talk here. Uh, that could be a new segment. Ooh. Um, if aliens were to really exist and they are truly spying on us, like what would that actually mean? Kind of, it's, it's a little scary because it's like if they are so smart to be able to travel here and go pretty much undetected and like not be seen up close, I mean, that's that's some scary stuff a little bit. I mean, they're they're doing something. They're, they're looking at us for some reason. Maybe just for fun. I mean, I hope that's what it is. <laughs> Maybe it's, like I said, it's an entertaining TV show, man. Oh man! All right, guys. Well, hey, we're gonna we're gonna end this segment because we should. <laughs> Definitely. That was interesting. But now we have some new things after the break: fan questions, things I learned from the internet, and more. Let's All do right. it. Hey guys, this is Tim and Chris from the Always More podcast. Thank you so much for subscribing, following, rating, liking, commenting, and asking us questions. If you haven't done any of those, you're wrong and you need to. <laughs> oh my gosh, Chris, chill. Okay, well, seriously, thank you guys so much for those who have donated to the podcast by giving at buymeacoffee.com uh, in our sh- link in our show notes. And it really just helps us like spend more time to creating a better content for you guys to listen to and to also just help feed our caffeine addiction. Which we definitely do have. <laughs> it, it's actually a real problem for us. It is. It's it is. destroying our families. It's horrible. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much. Back to the show. We are back again. Back, 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 back. Welcome back, 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 back again, again, again. I have no idea what that is. No? Nope. Homie, I was sheltered. It's Eminem. Yeah, I, <laughs> you wouldn't know. Okay, fair enough. Welcome back, guys. Oh, Welcome back man. to the pod. We are jumping into our next few segments, kind of wrapping it up for the pew, night. Pew, pew. Segment number one, one of our favorites, one of your favorites. Yes. Hashtag Ask Chris and Tim. It's trending, man. Is it, though? No. <laughs> guys, make it trend. <laughs> we want it to trend. Put it on all of your posts. If if you're putting out, like, a lunch post on Instagram, <laughs> hashtag Chris, Ask Chris and Tim. Yeah. If you're putting, like, a... A vague book status about somebody that you're not enjoying in your life. Yes. A coworker or something. Anything. Hashtag ask Chris and Tim. If you have friends that have questions about anything, if somebody's like, hey, if you wanted to lose 10 pounds a month, <laughs> where would you go? Hashtag ask Chris and Tim. I don't know the best place to lose 10 pounds, but I will give you a location. <laughs> On the corner of 3rd and Main. I, I don't know what you would do there, but... I'll answer your questions, whether you want it or not. If you run there, you might be able to get some few pounds. That depends on how far away from Third Main you live. Very true. (laughs) All right, let's get into this, man. Ask Chris and Tim, what is our questions? All right, so your lovely wife, Jessica, asked, who is your favorite Walking Dead character? Okay. Look, it's Daryl. And I know it's not your favorite, but it's many other people. I don't hate him. He's a good judge of character. And I don't care what you say because about Carol. Carol doesn't count. No, no, no. The longtime friend. She doesn't count. Everyone else. Carol counts. No, no. He's look, not they, a good judge of character because he keeps forgiving her. He keeps going after whatever she wants to go after. He keeps trying to help her sabotage herself. She, no, she keeps he keeps trying to help her not sabotage by making things worse. He he tries to like, okay, if you're going to go out there no matter what, at least let me help you make it not as worse as it could be. Or he could just say, yeah, go out there no matter what and let her die and stop being everyone's problem. But it, she is literally everyone's problem. But okay. She's got real Rick Grimes energy. Well problematic you're not wrong her and rick were both the worst okay daryl's still the best though daryl daryl's all right my favorite though honestly and as much as i hate rick love his daughter judith judith's great judith is the best yeah i want my daughter to grow up to be just like judith she's she's fantastic in the show (laughs) because (laughs) she did not make it 
past childbirth in the prison. That's so sad. She, she didn't make it out of the prison. It's so sad. She, it's she never had got the chance for character development. Yeah. And not her fault. Obviously, she was a baby. But in the show, they really flesh out her character. Right. And I loved it. Yeah, absolutely. Did a great job. Yeah, cool. All right, next up, Harley asked, if you could be an animal for a day, what animal and why? I would be some type of large cat, like a tiger or a lion. To be the apex predator kind of thing? I want to be the apex predator, not because I want to hunt, but because I don't want to be hunted while I nap for 18 hours in a day. But you would have to be with a pride. Now, here's the question. That's fine. Well, here's the question, though, is would those other lions, like, are you being, like, incarnated into a living lion that's already lived its life and you just take over for a day? Or are you a brand new lion? Because if you're a brand new lion, those guys might attack you. You're, you're, you're a foreigner. Well, here's the thing, though. Am I a brand new lion just, like, in my house I turn into a lion? Oh, that's a good point. Or do I go to Africa to be a lion? Or am I in a zoo? Like, what's what's the deal here? But, I, I don't know. I guess in this scenario... There, you, there's a lot of variables. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be in, like, a... I mean, a random animal. I mean, I guess, unless it's my pick, which is a like a peregrine falcon, where I could just leave the house and go fly out and, you know, do falcon Can things. Can you leave the house? How yeah. are you getting out? Huh? How my, are you getting my out? My wife would open the door. Would she? Yes. You think you don't think she would just, like, let you stay in the house as a falcon? No, she let me go. I'm, no, I feel like she'd be too scared to open the door for a brand new falcon. But she, she knew it was me. Or she would run out of the house with the kids, <laughs> close the door behind her. And call animal control. <laughs> okay, this is the other So now assumption. you're a trapped peregrine oh, falcon. Shoot. How'd that go for you, Tim? <laughs> Didn't work out the way you planned, did it? It's the same difference with a lion, though. You're See, gonna... Harley, when you give us these questions, <laughs> we need to know what the variables are. So as much as I love answering your questions, next time, if you could give us, like, specific situations, oh my gosh. that way we have specific answers for you. Because this is, we could go all day for it. This could be our next topic. What happens if you become an animal? <laughs> Where does it happen? When does it happen? How does it happen? <laughs> I'm here for it. That's our next topic. Wait, wait. So join us next time on our podcast. <laughs> Just wait, side note. Did you ever read the books Animorphs? Yeah. Those were amazing. Jason actually did get stuck as a falcon. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. He was stuck. He was a falcon forever. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad way to go. I mean, if you're going to go one way, that, I, I guess falcon. that's a way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question. Uh, yeah. So Tierra asks, what's scarier? The ocean or space? Okay, so we've talked about this, and we 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 we've, we've narrowed it down. It's the ocean. Ocean, one hundred percent. There's there's things there that we know that are there that can kill you and will hunt you. Like and you take a breath in space, you die. You take a breath in the ocean, you die. Mm-hmm. But if you're just out in space, yeah. you die eventually. If you're in the ocean, you're gonna get eaten. Yeah, yeah. you will die painfully. It, it, it's, it's a it's, or you'll be crushed by the pressure. <laughs> If you're or underwater, you will yeah. drown, which is a slow and painful death, yeah. rather than just having your organs explode out of your body and due to lack of pressure, you die immediately. Right. I'd rather die in space than the ocean. See, my wife cannot stand space movies where they're actually out in space. Like she, she like she loved The Martian because most of the time he's on Mars, but. Like anytime, like uh, what's the movie Gravity? Oh, like, Gravity was intense. Yeah, she she cannot watch those because she just freaks her out. Freaks her out. I yeah. can't watch deep sea movies. Ooh. I mean, I I can. I do all the time. I love <laughs> stupid shark movies, but it always freaks me out. Yeah. I'm always every time they go underwater, I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> like I hold my breath with them. I'm like, nope, I couldn't have done that. I would have died. So, okay, okay. Speaking of, and we'll, we'll finish on this. If you guys haven't heard of the freaking giant squid, go Google it and be scared. You should, because those, those things are real, They and they are out there. They kill whales. For fun. And food, but also fun. <laughs> like, sometimes they just kill them. They just strangle them. Well, Who strangles a whale? Squids. These giant squids do. They will, like, wrap them up with tentacles and then put their tentacles in their mouth and shove them down their throat so they can't breathe anymore. Yeah. And then when the whale is dead, they let go, and they leave. Yeah. They don't care. <laughs> They're just here for the violence. <laughs> All right, guys. That was Ask Chris and Tim. Thank you, guys. And if you'd like to ask us some questions, please, on the interwebs, Instagram, message us, email us. All of your questions. We want to hear your questions. I want them all. Genuinely. I want all the smoke. <laughs> all your questions. If they have nothing to do with anything we've talked about, if your friends have questions about anything, send them to us. Say, hey, my friend asked about this. Even if you know the answer, you just want to hear me explain something completely wrong, I'll do it. Yeah. That might be another uh, another. Segment, Chris explains things wrong. I'm down for that. Let's do it. (laughs)
<laughs> All right, let's move on to our next segment. And this is one I'm really excited. It's something that we just started doing, but I'm ready to dive into it. It is titled, dang it, I did the wrong <laughs> one again. <laughs> you know what? Leave that in there. Leave, leave that in there. Oh, it must be this one. It no. It, no, it's that, is that it's one. That one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to love just what we look like right now. Okay, next segment is titled, Things I've Learned from the Internet. I love it. I'm here for it. That's beautiful. It might be a little long, but I love it. All right, you go first because we we got to move. We, look, we, we're talkers. We, we knew we knew this going into this. I <laughs> learned from the internet about the Bone Wars. Please tell. It's not an actual war. It's not okay. as cool as it sounds. All right, so there's these two dudes, right? They're uh, paleontologists, O.C. Marsh and E.D. Cope. Yeah. They hated each other because at one point in time, Cope mounted a oceanic reptile okay so like a leoplerodon okay a magical leoplerodon nice thanks uh he mounted a marine reptile in a museum but he put the head on the tail he put it on the wrong end okay it's a butthead dinosaur yeah yeah yeah. and um marsh was like yo that's not right <laughs> and immediately cope was just like marsh <laughs> like that started a feud that Really, they they got they went back and forth a lot for no reason. It got called the Bone Wars. They were both paleontologists at the same time, so every time one of them would discover something, the other one would try to discredit oh, them. And got they, it. Would, they would like go back and forth trying to fight each other. Um, it got to the point where at one point in time, Marsh was actually bribing the excavators that Cope had hired to mm-hmm. send the fossils to Marsh instead. Huh. So every time they're like, oh, we found something, he's like, yo, I got $5. <laughs> If you send that to my office instead of yeah. his. And they're like, we are definitely not going to do that. What's your address? <laughs> so they were they were doing stuff like that. Um, a lot of dinosaurs that we know came from that era, like the Triceratops. Yeah, yeah. They were all discovered around that time period and categorized and everything. But a lot of mistakes were made because they were rushing to beat each mm. other to the punch. And scientists had to go back and fix a lot of the stuff we learned from there. Huh. I learned that from Hank Green. Hank Green, he's the If he's you the don't coolest. follow Hank Green on TikTok, what are you even doing with your What life? are you doing with your life? Yeah, he's so amazing. All right, okay, so my, I got to do this quickly because I get excited about these history facts that I come like I find and you know learn about. So prior to 150 years ago, uh, instead of like getting ready for Thanksgiving around the fall season, you'd be getting ready for evacuation day. So prior to uh, the the um, President Lincoln establishing Thanksgiving for the annual national holiday, um, there was actually this holiday holiday called evacuation day. And basically, what happened was it was a celebration back towards the American Revolution when the British were actually finally leaving. Uh, was it New York? I think yeah, it was Manhattan. And so here's what happened. This is how petty the British were when they left. I mean, rightfully so. The colony just broke off and started their own nation. But I'd be petty. Yeah. So as they were getting ready to leave, they had a flagpole. And, of course, it had the Union Jack on there. It had the, you know, the, the British the flag. The British flag. Yeah, yeah. And as as they were getting ready to leave, they left the flag up there. And then they, like, basically like lubricated it. So it's like it's like you see the <laughs> you see those videos of like squirrels like trying to get up those poles to get the the bird feeder seat and stuff. It was like that. So they lubricated it to where it was like you had to like try to get past that. So America, being Americans at the time, they sure enough you know did it and they they got past the lubrication and they were able to change out the flags, put up the new flag, whatever it was at the time. The British on their way out on the ship saw that they did it, and so they decided to fire one last cannon. But they missed, and it just ended up landing in the ocean. But they were just like... They were trying to hit the, yeah, the flag. Yeah, they were trying to hit them. It's like, you guys are so stinking petty. But then, but so, you know, it's the whole reason why I say I'm just that, imagining that scene from Captain America <laughs> where all the soldiers are, like, scrambling to get up the flag. Yeah. And he just walks up and just, like, boop, <laughs> grabs the flag, hands it to him, sits in the back of the truck. So that evacuation led to a, uh, a, a holiday in the Northeast called Evacuation Day, which was eventually replaced by our... Thanksgiving. So it had nothing to do with the pilgrims and the natives. Nope. Hmm. So that's what I learned from the internet. Funny. Oh, yeah, very funny. Weird, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, let's move on. We have one more segment that I'm really excited about, and that is Shower Thoughts with Chris. Do you guys think, like, animals tell stories about humans to their kids? 
And if so, are they like moral stories? Like when we tell animal stories to our kids or are they more like horror stories? It's gotta be more horror. You would think, right? Like if the animals are aware of human existence, cause like we have internet and picture books and all that stuff mm-hmm. and they only have like firsthand stories. You think the kids believe them? Yeah. Where they're like, yeah, don't go near the humans. And they're like, yeah. humans aren't real. That's a good point. I mean, I mean, like that turtle that ended up in that lady's <laughs> windshield. Like, you think Jerome went back and told all the other turtles, and they were like, humans aren't real, Jerome, whatever. It's like, no, I swear. It happened. One of them threw me. I was terrified. <laughs> yeah, it's like campfire stories. It's got to be more horror, and it's got to be like like warnings that don't go and near them. the humans came. I mean, I mean, we, we, I mean, we, we've given them every reason. Every to reason. We destroy stuff. everything. So yeah, everything we touch. Yeah. Well, all right. Thank yeah. you, thank you, Chris, for that shower thought. <laughs> well, you're welcome for that shower thought, Chris. This is the end of another episode. All right. So here are my final thoughts. Then. Yeah. Aliens are definitely real. We're probably all gonna die soon. <laughs> uh, animals don't like humans. Yeah. That's that's a good summary. Boom. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I think. I think. Yeah. I th- I agree with you. Aliens are probably probably exist. I personally don't think we will ever meet them unless it's like. No, because we... Well, not with that attitude. <laughs> well, one, the technology is not there, but even if we were to live long enough, or even the human race wouldn't be able to live long enough to reach it because the Earth is, the, the sun is expanding, and by the time we might be able to reach the technology technology to do, like, uh, um, uh, uh, like star or um, light travel, light speed travel, we'd be burnt up and dead. I mean, unless they come here first and give us their technology. Maybe. They've already figured it out, maybe. Possibly. Oh, that's a good point. Who knows? I don't know. I'll tell you who does know. President Joseph Biden. <laughs> Joe Bidenson. Is that what Aaron Joseph, said? Joseph <laughs> Bidenson. <laughs> I want his middle name to also be Joseph. <laughs> J. Jonah Bidenson. All right, guys. Hey, that was a really fun episode. Thank you guys for listening and watching and just being here for the Always More podcast. We love doing this thing for you guys. With we you love guys. you. We do. We do love you. and uh, Specifically you. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I think that's all we have. That's all I've got. <laughs> Join us next time for the Always More podcast. Rate, like, review. Give us all this stuff. You know we love it. See you. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Always More podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe, share, like, and rate on whatever your platform of preference is. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Always More Pod and ask your question using hashtag Ask Chris and Tim. If you'd like to support the podcast and feed into Chris and Tim's caffeine addiction, you can do so at buymeacoffee.com slash alwaysmorepod. For further information and to contact Chris or Tim, you can email them at alwaysmorepodcast at gmail.com.